Sometimes, in an effort to break stubborn stories, you have to get creative. So, in order to take you inside the murky world of illegal pharmacy kickbacks, we had to do something we've never done before. Hello, how are you? We created a fake company. We fired off some fancy business cards. We developed an extensive generic drug product listing to offer pharmacists. And then our awesome CBC graphics team created our company website. And that's how Dari Pharmaceuticals was born. Google it yourself, it's pretty convincing. And though the company is fake, the problem of illegal kickbacks inflating your drug prices is very real. Darren, how are you? Good, thank you. From uh, Dari Pharmaceuticals. It all began last spring, when we were tipped off to this kickback scheme by an inside source. A fifth estate investigation revealed retail giant Costco was demanding kickbacks from a generic drug manufacturer. Industry insiders call these payments rebates, or in Costco's case, support. The shakedown caught on secretly recorded phone calls. It was big news at the time. Costco's share price even took a dip. But we wanted to know, was it just Costco demanding kickbacks? Then we got an email. It's not just Costco. Every single pharmacy across this country takes kickbacks in a monetary form still to this day. This from someone anonymous, but apparently in the know. I'm a former rep and can definitely say that this happens. It is still happening and will continue to happen. Now, if he's right, it means that every pharmacy in Ontario could be breaking a provincial law that bans rebates. It's everybody. Everyone that sells pharmaceuticals is doing this. We tracked down the mystery man behind the email. We've agreed to hide his identity because he still works in sales for another company. We're calling him Darren. Darren, tell me, when you were working in the game, how did the rebate system work for the company you were working with? For the safety of the pharmacy owner, because it's an illegal act to give rebates back, we would pay them back from one of the other companies for marketing fee. Um, so really what, all we'd have to do is put a display in their store. We didn't care if you sold anything off that display. It was really just a display in the store. So if anything ever came back to say, no, that's, a, that's our display in the store. We're, we're paying them a, marketing, a monthly marketing fee for that space. But the whole scheme was set up to disguise rebates, to hide these rebates, because they were illegal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Got it? Okay, let's hit pause for a second and explain how these rebates or kickbacks work. A drug rep shows up at a pharmacy and asks the pharmacist to stock their pills in the store. Often, pharmacists will ask for a rebate or a kickback. They won't sell the product unless the drug rep gives them a cut. That's illegal in Ontario, restricted in Quebec, but allowed in some form in the rest of Canada. So how do we prove kickbacks are being paid in Ontario? Well, Darren says that's easy. Hi, Nish. Hi. I'm interested to know why you wanted to help us out on this, with this story. I think is what I've said from all along is that it's just not fair. It's, it's driving the prices of medication up for the customer, for the end user. I'll offer more points than the next guy that just came in before me. And that's driving the cost of the pills up. Okay, so Darren, you know what you need here. Here's our product listing, business cards, business phone. You got everything you need to be a sales rep. Excellent. We sent Darren out with one of our producers and a couple of hidden cameras. Surely it takes more than a firm handshake and a fake business card before a pharmacist will openly ask about an illegal kickback. And what's the deal on it? Uh, the deal on the, well, the rebate. Yeah. Apparently not. Oh, it uh, depends on your volume. If you needed something. Perfect. Hey, thanks, okay. yeah. have a great day. Our instructions to Darren were clear. Let the pharmacist raise the issue of these illegal payments first, which they did, time and time again. How are you? I know you got, your, you got to follow your formulary. 
Yeah. So it just depends on how far outside of that you can. What's the uh, what's the rebates on it? Depends on your volume. Depends on the volume you can do per month. That's not a problem. So how much yeah. of a kickback? Well, right this now, pharmacist problem. starts big and okay, goes bigger. I mean, uh, like a rebate, they give more than the, the, the 50, I mean, for some product that they want. They want, oh, okay, exactly. Yes, they, okay. Go, they go higher to give incentive to, to move those. Products. How high are they going on those? Well, I, some day you go to 60, some day you go to, 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 to 70. Oh, you're quite welcome. 70%, and he's not the only pharmacist to mention that number. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking if, if it's worth for me switching. Yeah. Right. Because right. I have to explain to every customer why there is a new generic. And, yeah. You know, that's... Uh, so how does that make it worth it for you then? Right. Right. Is, what's a comfortable number for you? 70. 70? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's hit pause again. Rebates as high as 70% mean if you pay 10 bucks for some generic pills, the pharmacy would get a $7 kickback from the drug company. That means drug companies could sell these meds for way less, a huge savings for consumers. Instead, that money goes to the pharmacy. Watch as this next owner gets specific. He wants to know when and how he's going to get paid. One last thing regarding the... Um, the do you pay uh, on your products or not? Yes. How much? Yeah. Depends on the volume. Um, but I'm assuming with six stores, you could do some significant volume. How often is the payment? Is it next month? Or yeah. Two months? No, or? Next month, yeah. Full amount. Full amount, yeah. Do, do you mail it or do you bring it by yourself? No, I deliver it. Delivery yourself? Yeah, delivery. yeah. And um, so I guess we can speak freely, obviously. Okay. How do you prefer that? Prefer the, the method of uh, yeah. Do you right. want check or do you want check. do you want check? Okay, check. okay, that's easy enough. No problem, yeah. Yeah, perfect. We learned we weren't the only ones on to this. Seems a retired cop was calling for a police investigation into rebates way back in 2009. So we decided to pay Paul Bailey a visit and show him some of our undercover footage. Greed. That's uh, that's all I see. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sad. All they wanted mo was money. Mm. They had their hand out. Mm -hmm. And there is a law in place that's supposed to say that rebates are, are no longer legal in the Not province. Not directly or indirectly. That's the wording in the legislation. Is that what your concern is? What you're saying here? Yeah. Yeah. If I was still a detective, and somebody presented that to me, I would investigate it as a fraud. But, you know, uh, the other thing is you're taking on City Hall when you go after these guys. But we're not done yet. It's day three of our hidden camera investigation. Once again, we're asked how much our rebate will be. How are you? So what, what kind of rates are we looking at offhand? Like, you know? uh, typically, uh, it depends on what you could do, what you could think you could do per month. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, so, like, so it's based on my sales then? Is that what it's, it's, but then we're offered a peek inside how this owner currently gets paid. The rebate flowing through a middle company called a banner. So, so basically we get, so, uh, you know, so basically the banner cuts us a check month, every month. And it's, you know, it's for, it's not for technically a rebate. It's more of like, a, you know, this is for, uh, you know, uh, professional services and what have you, right? Oh, that's how they were. Okay, okay, okay. Or okay, yeah. advertising as a marketing Yeah, company. exactly. That's yeah. how it works, right? Yeah, so I'd put, uh, I'd put a little display of something in here, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't that take up a lot of space? Yep, yeah. And then that way for you, you're protected. Exactly, yeah. right? So was, I think that's how most people are, are wording it nowadays, right? Our next stop reveals even more insight. This pharmacist has what he calls a marketing agreement to justify his current 50% kickback. Is there like a marketing agreement? Do we sign something? Uh, we don't want you to sign anything as long as you and I have an understanding that... Well, I don't know this about is... the legality. With everybody else, we've signed something. Oh, you are, right? Yeah. Oh, you are, really? Yeah, what? And what kind of stuff? Are they, what is it? How so, is it really like, uh, if, if CRA is going to come after me, why are you, why are you getting this? I'm not, like, <laughs> 
Why are you getting this marketing fee if you're yeah. not if you don't have a marketing agreement? Yeah. Oh, okay, I get you. Is that how it's working then with the others? Yeah, everyone marketing? does that. Yeah. Everyone else is doing that. A marketing fee, okay. Because it's just like because uh, rebates are illegal in Ontario. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you seeing here? Uh, Fifty. 50. Over three days, we visited 17 pharmacies. We spoke to nine owners who wanted to buy our product. All but one openly asked us about rebates, and none of them seemed the least bit worried about asking. And neither did Darren when he was in the game. At any point, were you concerned that there was somebody looking over your shoulder, that, that you, were, you, know, you were being monitored, or this law was actually gonna be enforced? No. No, I just went out, did my job as a sales rep, did what I was told to do. Like everyone else is doing. Exactly. Every month I walk around with a binder full of checks. At some point you get so big that that's really all you're doing. You really become, you're handing up checks. That's the price of doing business. Exactly. What would happen if you didn't pay the rebates? You would not get your subsequent order for the next month. Okay, we're gonna get started. Well, it seems our investigation lit a fire under retired cop Paul Bailey. We're paying the, one of the highest costs for generic drugs in the developed world here in Ontario and in Canada. And, and part of it is because of those rebates. He's head of the Police Pensioners Association of Ontario. Well, what I've just heard you talk about today, I find extremely disturbing. And this is an outrage when there's uh, unnecessary expenses being put on which is creating an extra cost to those of us who need these drugs. Now the association wants the Ontario government to hold an inquiry into these kickbacks. So far, we've been focusing on independent pharmacies. But what about those big national chains? Well, you're about to hear another industry insider spill their secrets. So everybody's getting in on this. Yes, no manufacturer could be successful in Ontario if they did not pay a rebate. And then we go looking for answers. Good morning. Hi, good morning. My name is Mark Kelly. I'm with CBC program The Fifth Estate. It's not often you see protesters wearing lab coats, but this was the case outside the legislature in Ontario back in 2010. These pharmacists were fighting to stop sweeping reforms, including a rebate ban. The White Coat said that would cost them $750 million a year. The predictions were dire. Stores would close, services slashed, lives put at risk. It could be you coming in with a, an ailing parent who's very confused with their medication and I'm spending time with you to make sure that your, your, your parent is, is safe and taking his medication appropriately. Those are the services that we're talking about that is at risk. The province was in their crosshairs, but it wasn't just Ontario pushing for reforms. The federal government launched its own investigation led by this guy. So at that point in time, the generic manufacturers were competing against each other. The beneficiary was the pharmacies. They were getting the money. But that, that was no benefit for the consumer then in terms of actually reducing the cost, which nope. it could. No. Mark Renane worked with the Competition Bureau of Canada. Ten years ago, he co-authored a study that revealed the rebates paid to the pharmacies have accounted for a large portion of payers' generic drug costs, 40% or more of generic drug expenditures. The reports made headlines. Reforms, including eliminating rebates, would save hundreds of millions of dollars. With your studies that you were doing with the uh, uh, competition bureau, you had recommendations, uh, what happened? Uh, not much. <laughs> Why? Um, I'm not going to answer that question, because <laughs> if I told the truth. <laughs> Why not? Okay, we stop. <laughs> well, what can you answer? Ronan gathered his thoughts, then put it this way. It's going to take some work. It's going to take a lot of will. Uh, on the political side, uh, dealing with some you know, quite powerful interests. We showed Ronane our undercover footage, and the name of one powerful interest popped up. Because really, we, we order McKesson. Yeah. Uh, they say if you buy I don't know, 1,000, for example, then you get a rebate, 50% that. Okay. 
a 50% rebate from a company called McKesson? Then we hear it again. How does, that, how does it work then? So I use McKesson, so McKesson only, and they give the numbers to they consolidate the numbers and give me 50% back. McKesson is one of the biggest fish in the healthcare pond. 78,000 employees in almost two dozen countries, ranked sixth on the Fortune 500 list of companies. It now owns more than 400 pharmacies in Canada. Edmonton's Kate's Group is selling Rexall drugstores for $3 billion. San Francisco-based healthcare company McKesson is buying all of Rexall's 470 pharmacies. But more than that, McKesson is also the biggest drug supplier in Canada, stocking the shelves of more than 8,000 pharmacies in Canada. And our pharmacists caught on camera seem to suggest McKesson is paying them illegal rebates to buy their product. So we asked for an interview with Paula Keyes, the president of McKesson Canada. And we received a brief response. I don't believe an in-person interview will be possible. Well, if McKesson won't do an interview with us, we went looking for an industry insider who would. Tell me about McKesson. McKesson is probably the biggest company no one would recognize. This executive worked for some of the biggest names in drugs, including McKesson. We agreed to conceal his identity to protect his current job. He agreed to talk to us about rebates. Every time uh, a government agency would start looking at McKesson, um, McKesson would come with their lawyers and present to McKesson employees what not to say. And was one of those words rebate? Absolutely. The Fifth Estate has obtained this internal McKesson presentation from 2017 that deals with rebates. The document explicitly instructs its employees to remove the word rebates from their vocabularies, while other terms such as professional allowances should be used with caution. Now it does say rebates are illegal in Ontario, but goes on to say, all four main McKesson banners make payments to its pharmacies, but for different things, under different names, and under different circumstances. Our question, if McKesson isn't profiting from rebates, why even mention them in this document? Why do you have to have so many terms? You have to have so many terms because you want to complicate it. Because you don't want people to follow the money. You don't want in a zero rebate land in Ontario to show that you're paying a certain percentage for a certain dollar value. This internal McKesson document goes on to say the company needs to minimize the number of payment models it uses for reputational, regulatory and legal reasons. So seven years after rebates became illegal in Ontario, it appears McKesson admits it still needs to change the way it moves money, so it's following the law. Okay, so let's pause again. These rebates, or disguised rebates, are only illegal in Ontario. Quebec has put a cap on them, but everywhere else in Canada, they're considered perfectly legal. Great for business, not so good for consumers. This, in many uh, instances, ends up as pure corporate profit. Corporate profit at the manufacturer level, corporate profit at the pharmacy and chain level. So great deal for the pharmacies, great deal for the manufacturer, not such a great deal for the consumer. Correct. So is McKesson profiting from rebates? We sent a second email asking for an interview. In a response, the company's spokesperson told us, McKesson Canada does not pay rebates where prohibited and our business activities are in compliance with the law and regulatory requirements of the markets where we operate. But once again, no interview with the president. So our quest for answers headed in a new direction. When Costco was caught red-handed demanding kickbacks by the Ontario College of Pharmacists, the college heard allegations other companies were doing the same thing. So our lawyers filed a motion to make the documents from the college's investigation public, which Costco opposed. But guess what? We won. So which chains were alleged to have had a similar rebate scheme? Well, Guardian, one of McKesson's independent pharmacy banners, and Rexall, owned and operated by McKesson.
We wanted to see if this was true, but this time we didn't bother emailing McKesson. We just showed up at the Montreal head office for an unscheduled interview with company president Paula Keyes. Mrs. Keyes, good morning. Hi, good morning. My name is Mark Kelly. I'm with CBC program The Fifth Estate. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Good, but I'm late for my gym. We're doing a program uh, about illegal rebates that are being paid at pharmacies in... We're trying to contact your company, ma'am, uh, because the name McKesson keeps coming up time and time again. Pharmacists who say that they are doing business with McKesson and getting illegal rebates. I don't think you can walk away from these questions, ma'am. They're serious public interest. Speak to our communications. We've tried to contact your communications. No comment. Okay, we didn't get answers, but we did get their attention. Oh, this is the head of communications. Just Minutes later, McKesson's audio. communications rep calls yeah. us. I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily think in, uh, we're, we're up for an interview, but, but honestly, we can answer any questions you have and be as collaborative as possible. And within days, we get a response from company president Paula Keyes. McKesson Canada does not pay rebates in Ontario, and any assertion to the contrary is blatantly false. McKesson Canada compensates the independent pharmacy owner for things like banner advertising in the store, promotion of new over-the-counter products, and healthcare services, and providing healthcare information to patients. But our pharma insider says terms like these could be used to mask how rebates are paid. He says it would take a forensic investigation to follow the money. When I talk to people in the industry, they'll say, well, we don't take a rebate. It's a professional allowance. If it's not a professional allowance, it's something else. But no matter what you call it, money is going from the manufacturer to the pharmacy. At the end of the day, is a rebate. Call it what you want. It's a rebate. Disguise it how you want. It's a rebate. So we wondered, would Ontario's new health minister, Christine Elliott, lead an investigation into allegations of rebates? Then we were reviewing the tape of that LabCo protest in 2010, and we noticed one politician shoulder to shoulder with the pharmacists. That was then conservative health critic, Christine Elliott. Back then, she made no bones about which side of the rebate debate she was on. The McGinty Liberals are vilifying pharmacists, but... But that was then. With all the questions raised in our investigation, we wondered, what does the minister think now? Then retired cop Paul Bailey called us to let us know he got a meeting with her to discuss rebates. We tagged along, and minutes after Bailey's meeting was over, we asked to meet with her too. Good. Mark Kelly from CBC Television. Uh, we're not doing any interview. Uh, the minister has left. Oh. I guess to a back entrance. Uh, they did not appreciate the fact that the camera was here for an interview uh, for Paul's meeting with the minister, that they were unaware of that. Uh, they will watch our program when it airs and we can organize some sort of meeting at Queen's Park afterwards. Okay. So who's going to crack down on the pharmacists asking for illegal kickbacks and the companies who pay them? Bailey says while the Ford government didn't write the law banning rebates, it's their job to enforce it. So we're, we're holding their, their foot to the flame. But when you look at the landscape here, and especially as a <coughs> former police officer, I mean, who, who's the bad guy here? Is it the government? Is it the generic drug companies? Is it the pharmacies for, for asking and taking these rebates? Well, I think they're all culpable. And he says until someone fights for the consumer, nothing will change. Greed is a, it's a powerful weapon. And who's paying the price for this? Taxpayers. Yeah. So time will tell. Maybe if uh, this makes it on to, to um, makes enough uh, noise out there, maybe uh, the prime minister or the premier will uh, call for a public inquiry because that's what I'm calling for.